Welcome aboard the Wonder of the Seas. Spend an action-packed day with us on one of the largest cruise ships in the world. Ice skating, rock climbing, flow riders, mini golf, an eight-story slide, robot bartenders, 19 swimming pools, 20 restaurants, and two death-defying, one-of-a-kind shows. Today, we attempt to do it all. Well, not everything. Yeah, well, you're right, but as much as we can. So here we are on Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas. This is actually the third Royal Caribbean ship I've been on, and I can tell you, this is by far the best. Wonder of the Seas is currently the second largest cruise ship in the entire world, and the last of the Oasis-class ships from Royal Caribbean, just beat out by Icon of the Seas only a few months ago. There are so many different neighborhoods on this ship, and our goal today is to highlight our favorites from each of them. So without further ado, let's go explore. After stopping for a quick slice of pizza, I am needing to burn off these calories in what better way than to go ice skating on a cruise ship. Yeah, you heard me right. In full transparency, we've been on the ship for three days now, and we are still learning exactly where everything is, like in the entertainment plaza, which is where the ice skating is. Are you okay? I'm gonna fall down the stairs. Please don't. I instantly, instantly regret this. I have not ice skated since I was in high school. Okay, so clearly they spent all of their budget on keeping this ice cold and zero of it on a Zamboni. It's kind of embarrassing that I'm 28 years old and almost all of these children are skating better than me. <laughs> One thing that all of the Royal Caribbean Oasis class ships has is a boardwalk. Now there's one thing different about the boardwalk here on Wonder of the Seas and that is an eight story slide that starts all the way from deck 16 and goes all the way down to deck seven. Right now we are in deck 17, which is the sporting deck here on Wonder of the Seas. There are so many different activities you could do up here. Everything from ping pong tables, to basketball courts, to mini golfing, to a flow rider wave machine, as well as one that we're actually participating in today, which is the zip line. This is a zip line, which is eight stories up above the floor below. This is gonna be a rough one. That's why I'm making Isabel go first. <laughs> okay, okay, wait, hold on. Here we go, here we go. Okay, we're going, we're going already, we're going. Uh, how scary was that? It wasn't bad at all. It wasn't bad? No. Did you look down? Yeah. That wasn't bad. You are fearless. You're really strapped in. Like, you're, they, got, they really got you in there. You're going nowhere. No, you're going nowhere. The last zip line I did, I was nowhere near looped in like this. You're just hanging on? Was it above the pool? Were you just doing the zip line over and over again and not participating in the game show? Yes, yes. That was me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you keep using, Isabel keeps using the zip line. That's actually how we met on a dating show like that. Yeah. Out of all the activities up here on the sports deck, Isabel, what's one other that you are looking forward to doing the most? The big ass slide. What's the big ass slide? The one that's like from level 18 to level seven. The abyss, whatever it's called. As much as I'd like to do that right now, we do have lunch dining reservations, which we're running a little late to. It's about lunchtime here on the Wonder of the Seas, and I thought, what better time than to go check out one of the most exclusive, best reviewed restaurants in the entire Royal Caribbean fleet. That's right, we're headed over to the Mason Jar. The Mason Jar is a Southern style comfort food restaurant that is only available here on the Wonder of the Seas. This dining option is an add-on. It is not complimentary like most other dining here on the ship. And that's kind of why we're highlighting it right now. Anyway, because we've heard so many good things about it and we just had to check it out. I know I literally just said we were here for lunch, but turns out we've got in front of us the brunch menu, which I was actually looking forward to even more, featuring tons of Southern favorites like chicken and waffles, a Southern breakfast, and more. I am a brunch enthusiast. Easily one of my top two meals, probably my top meal my favorite meal. Uh, there's about four things I already want on the menu, so I'm not, I'm not sure how I'm gonna narrow down, but we've got a great view for our meal. It's beautiful, we're by a window. The food looks amazing. I think I already know what I'm gonna get. I, I, think, I think I know in my heart of hearts what I'm gonna get. I think I know what I have to get. For starters, included with your meal is doohickeys for y'all. I don't know why it says this, but that's what it says. We have pimento cheese and saltines, as well as jalapeno cornbread served with Cajun and whipped honey butter. I'm a little scared because it's jalapeno. Oh, it's nice and warm. No butter, nothing? <laughs> no, gotta go in. It just tastes like cornbread. I don't take the jalapeno. I'm Wait waiting for it. I'm, yeah, I'm waiting to see if there's... Oh, I just might not have gotten a jalapeno in that bite. I see there's like jalapenos elsewhere. This is one thing I was really looking forward to doing. No? I was, I was pinching a loaf. Are you 12? I am 12. 
bench warmers? No? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next up we have the Cajun butter. It looks like just like discolored regular butter, like a like a well, it's seasoning. Seasoning, it's but Cajun it, seasoning. But like have you ever had like a citrus butter? It's like the same color, you know? Ooh. You gotta try this, you gotta try this. Because this meal is an extra add-on, but it's a prepaid add-on, pretty much everything on the regular menu here is gonna be available to order with your meal itself. And because of that, we decided to split a cinnamon roll for the table as well. I ended up going with the Mima's Fried Chicken and Waffles. This is boneless fried chicken sitting on top two fresh buttermilk waffles with a side of warm maple syrup and hot honey. I ended up getting the breakfast biscuits all done up with bacon, onion, jam, cheddar, homemade sauce, Sausage and gravy topped with eggs cooked to y'all's liking. I don't think I've had chicken waffles before. Yeah, you have. No, I haven't. I went when, tell me when. Isabel did just correct me and tell me that I did have chicken and waffles actually as of the vlog channel very recently because I included footage from last year, but that was cornbread and waffles, if you don't remember. It was, it said chicken and waffles, not really chicken and waffles. This is actual chicken and waffles. My chicken and waffles was surprisingly very underwhelming. I feel like I haven't given a bad review for any food in quite, quite a bit of time, especially in the parks, but honestly, like this chicken and waffles was very, very underwhelming. Waffles seemed to be a uh, Ego brand. I mean, I'm sure they weren't, but that's what it tasted like. And the chicken itself was so like unseasoned. The breading was great and crispy and that was great, but just the chicken itself was not seasoned whatsoever. My biscuits and gravy was, was pretty solid, pretty good. It wasn't anything like out of this world life changing but it was pretty solid biscuits and gravy, seven out of 10. Like I did mention before, we happened to order a cinnamon roll for the table, which then I decided would be my actual main meal for this brunch, and I could not have made a better decision. The cinnamon roll was absolutely delicious. There was so much of the cream cheese icing that was dumped on top that it like literally pooled around the cinnamon roll itself, and that just made it so much better. One thing that we were not expecting was to get a dessert menu. That's right, there's desserts even for brunch here at at the mason jar. There were so many amazing options here for the dessert menu, but we ended up going with... Twice fried Oreos. Funnel cake battered, deep fried, and sizzling hot. Dusted with powdered sugar, plus a sauce for dipping. If I had not just had one of the world's largest cinnamon rolls, I would have enjoyed these Oreos more. I did really like them, but it's just, we were already stuffed at this point and not really wanting to get dessert, but I feel like we, it was like, not necessary, but we felt pushed to get the dessert, and I, I'm glad we did. Isabel, you liked them more than I did, didn't you? Yes, I did. It reminded me a lot of HHN, but then that made me sad. Which now you may have noticed we are no longer in the restaurant. Let me explain a little bit why. About halfway through our meal, the live music started, which was absolutely great. It was wonderful. I'm very glad that they have like a live country band in there. Very happy to hear my favorite country song of all time, Wagon Wheel. But it did make for the audio during the remaining portion of this restaurant review kind of unusable, which is okay, and that's why we're reviewing it here. Any, any last thoughts on the restaurant? I hate to say this, but I don't think it's worth it. I also don't think it's worth the add-on. I think it's like, like $25, $26 a per, is it more than that? I think it was more, I think it was more. I don't remember how much it was, but I think it was more. Yeah, so you do have to, this is extra add-on, and let me just say, all the, it comes from the same kitchen as their main buffet, and yes, it's different menus and stuff like that, but like, there's so much good food already everywhere that's included, so just maybe skip this one this time. And we just wanna be honest and let you know, we don't wanna be like, this is the best, just cause, yeah. So filming is not allowed inside of this slide itself, so obviously I'll be putting probably some B-roll from online that was gotten by Royal Caribbean, so thank you Royal Caribbean for this. But I will have Isabel catching me at the very bottom of the slide once I get off. You couldn't see a clip of this, but standing at the very top, like at the like platform to go in was a lot more stressful than actually being in there. Once you were in there, it was just like, oh, this is just a McDonald's slide that that keeps going and going and going. Isabel, what did you think? You actually, she, Isabel, she went right before me. I thought that was scarier than the zip line. Really? I don't like enclosed spaces. I don't know, it was kind of long and it was starting to get to me. And then the stress of making sure I was filming you when you came down the slide, it was a little scary. The first thing I saw when I looked off the boat at Cozumel is one of Ryan's favorite, favorite things. What is it? I don't know how long it's gonna take you to see the sign. Oh, it's gonna take me about two seconds. <laughs> I can see it already. <laughs> that is right, here in Cozumel, Mexico, they have a Margaritaville. I wonder if they have a plane, like the plane that they have over at City Walk. Did you know there's a really interesting story behind it? One thing that may not be obvious about this video and maybe even part of the next video is that we don't often get off the ships when we're here on a cruise. And I guess you'll just have to stay tuned for the video tomorrow to see exactly why I'll kind of explain a little bit more of that. Oh, but come on, ah, can't we, can we get it to go? Do you think they'll do Uber Eats? No. 
No? <laughs> Isabel, what is happening right now? Oh, we're getting off the ship. Why? We gotta go to Margaritaville. <laughs> <laughs> So we were currently in the middle of filming this vlog, highlighting the ship itself, but then we go, hold on, Margaritaville is right here. Why don't we just go? <laughs> so we're going to Margaritaville, and I think we're gonna be doing a TikTok or something like that, where we're trying out the most talked about local spot here in Cozumel. That's gonna be the video, because I have an old script I'm probably gonna recycle, and that's totally fine. Nobody's gonna know. Isabel has never been to Mexico for before, correct? No. So this is a first. <laughs> so I'm not 100% sure if we're going to be eating here at Margaritaville, mainly because we literally just ate lunch on the ship. But you know, we have to check out the gift shop and we like literally have to get something that says Margaritaville Cozumel, simply to prove that we've been here. <laughs> How's the merch so far? Wonderful, and the vibes here, immaculate. I want this. Fins up, Cozumel. My one goal here is to find a piece of merch that has Hemisphere Dancer on it, and I do not think that's going to happen. <laughs> While Isabel made what was probably the smarter decision and went back to the ship, I stayed back and actually ate a meal at Margaritaville simply because I wanted to be able to officially check this off of my list of credits of Margaritavilles that I've been to. And I don't think if you, if you don't eat anything, I don't think it counts, right? I ended up going with the Alabama cheese fries, which is their crispy French fries covered in melted cheddar Monterey Jack cheese, crispy bacon bits, and chives. And it cost a total of 18 US dollars. Do I regret my decision of eating at this Margaritaville here in Cozumel? No. Will my ears be be ringing for the rest of the cruise, possibly because they were blasting 2007 Jersey Shore club music for the entire time I was eating here. And honestly, that killed the vibe a tiny bit for me at least. I mean, they didn't even play like a Jimmy Buffett song whatsoever while I was seated there, which was kind of confusing, but I mean, he's not overseeing it anymore. So not that he ever was. I'm pretty sure it's just licensed out and they like give it to whoever pays the most money. So I don't know. Although I did not eat at Margaritaville, I did pick up some merch. Naturally. The the bag they gave us. It's beautiful. I love it. Did you notice what's on the side of the bag? Living life like a song? No, no. Turn it. Turn it. This is Air Margaritaville at the Cancun International Airport in Isabel. What, what is that right there in this logo? <gasps> That's Hemisphere Dancer. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. You know, there's a real... So Ryan got a Margaritaville hat. Which I was wearing. A visor. Yeah, he was wearing it. This is a visor. It says Cozumel. And then I got... Margaritaville, Cozumel, the back says, fins up. Since we're back at the room, I thought now might be a better time than ever to give a very quick, brief room tour. Our room here on Wonder of the Seas is a park view room of Central Park, which I do I do want to show you outside first. Come, come, come look at this. We are going to show you our wonderful view of Central Park after you, Isabel. Don't trip and fall. We are the very like corner of Central Park, the top corner. We're on the 14th floor here on the Wonder. In total, I believe there are 18 floors technically, but we are facing Central Park, which is my favorite part of the entire ship. Honestly, like I love it so much. We were debating between getting a Central Park view room and an exterior balcony room, but we did the exterior balcony on our Disney cruise. So we decided to try the um, interior view room this time. Other than the balcony and the view that we have, the rest of the room is fairly just regular. One thing I will say about Royal Caribbean that does better than any other cruise line that I've been on, and that is storage. We're gonna give you a quick view of these two massive, I mean, they don't look like big compared to stuff on land, but like, this is what it looks like. Is it okay if I open this? This yes. is yours, okay. <laughs> look at all that storage for clothes and hanging stuff. And that's what it's like. For here, here's my undie drawer. You wanna see my undies? No, thank you. There is a little desk space here and I actually do like this a lot because I will be editing most of these vlogs here on the cruise. Um, and they're gonna come out like the second that we, we land on, on land at the end. And then uh, here's the bathroom. It's a little corner shower thingy. It's really hard to film in here. Um, there's Isabel. Okay, that's it for the room. <laughs> On the same exact deck that you land on for the slide is the Aqua Theater, which has the show that I believe is called Intense. 
10 is capital in intense. That's why I said it like that. And we will be back to see it at some point. I don't remember when our reservation tonight. is. It's tonight. tonight. Oh, tonight. It's tonight. Well, welcome to tonight. We just finished watching the Aqua Theater show intense, and we're going to talk a little bit about it right now. To best explain what this show entails, I would say it's kind of like Cirque du Soleil meets Blue Man Group meets Bellagio Fountains meets Olympic level diving meets Tron Light Cycle Run meets College Slacklining, but over water meets martial arts choreography meets projection mapping. I know that was a whole lot. I had to take notes for this because it was so much going on, but I absolutely loved every second of it. As I've said at the very beginning of this video, I've been on quite a bit of cruises, and this was by far the best and most unique entertainment I've seen on a cruise ship ever. The production quality of the show felt on par with like some of the stuff I've seen in Las Vegas. Like it was very reminiscent of the Cirque du Soleil show Ka to me because they had a lot of like moving stages and fight sequences. So that was kind of crazy, especially since we did just get back from Las Vegas and everything, all the, all the shows in Las Vegas are so expensive and this is included with your, your cruise fare. The show is also 50 minutes, which is like way longer than it needs to be, which is kind of crazy because I, I would be so tired after doing all of that. And also the boat was moving and grooving while the show was going on. So like I have mad respect to the performers for doing all this while there was like some major movement happening on the boat. One other thing that I'd love to talk about but can't really show because of copyright reasons on YouTube is the soundtrack. This show featured remixes of everything from the Tron soundtrack, which is why I mentioned Tron earlier, to Muse, to Rage Against the Machine, This Will Destroy You, Led Zeppelin, and more. Also, the cast was fully made up of only women. I think there was like 16 women in this cast, and at the very beginning of the show, the screen flashed up something that said this show is dedicated to daughters, and that kind of makes a lot more sense now. This show was so, so good, and one thing I had to keep reminding myself was that they've had so many opportunities to up the ante on every single one of these shows because each one of the ships that they have in the Oasis class has this aqua theater and I believe I'm pretty sure every time they debut a new ship they debut a new show with it as well if not alter a show to add more to it so a 50 minute show with this much stuff packed into it makes perfect sense I mean they've been able to refine this so so many times one of the other entertainment options was the ice skating show and I loved that. I absolutely loved that. I think that one was also 50 minutes. It's actually really, really impressive what they managed to do with such a small, like, skating rink. This was the same space that Ryan went ice skating in this morning, so that was kind of crazy. Also, uh, the guy that's doing this crazy trick right here was the one who handed me my ice skates this morning. It was really weird. It was weird. I don't know. I just know they have to multi-purpose a lot of the staff on the ship because they're very limited on space. I guess one location they are saving space on for staff is their bartending. That may sound a little weird, but I'll have Ryan and Isabel from earlier today explain better as we're headed over to the Bionic Bar. Now, this isn't any regular bar. Here on this ship, they have a bar that is hosted by two robotic arms. These are Kuka arms to be exact, same exact robotic arms that you'll see not only building car vehicles in a manufacturing line, but also the ones that will control the ride vehicle of Forbidden Journey and maybe more universal rides to come. But this time, they're mixing drinks. Not only alcoholic drinks, but mocktails as well, because if you know us, you know that we don't drink. So we're gonna show you exactly what we got. I'm a big Shirley Temple connoisseur, so that's been my go-to. I haven't bothered to really stray far from that. I got, I think, the candy candy as well. That was fine, but I, I prefer this for sure. And I went with the drink called the Rainbow. I have no idea what's inside of it. I think it's like strawberry and orange and grenadine and something like that. I don't think there's any strawberry. There's no strawberry in this? It tastes like strawberry. I got the refreshment beverage package, which includes mocktails. So these drinks are included in my beverage package. And since they're robots, you're not expected to tip the robots. I think you should. I think you should. If there's a robot revolution, I'll be the first to go, happily. I won't survive, just take me. I want to end our action-packed day here on Wonder of the Seas by thanking each and every one of you for 100 videos. Yeah, this is like not intentional, but this happens to be our 100th video. I want to thank all the pity viewers, all of the um, non-pity viewers as well. It's very windy up here. What? Mm -hmm. how, how powerful is this wind? 40 knots. At time of release, tomorrow we are putting out our second vlog in the two vlog series, and that is Perfect Day at Coco Cay, and that's literally, that's it. And then we're moving on, we're going back to Disney, we're going back to Universal. Thank you for watching, subscribe, comment, like, all that stuff. Okay, ready? Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye.